Okay, our video now is about rotations. Again, a rotation is a transformation that is an isometry. So when I perform this transformation, the figure will remain congruent to the original. We talked about a rotation being a turn. We've used turn as another term for that, but it is a rotation. So we're going to talk about, again, rotations, just like with reflection and translation, will take place for our purposes on the coordinate plane. Now, one thing you have to know is that all rotations are going to go in a counterclockwise direction. That is the positive direction of any rotation. It does move counterclockwise. That means if I start in quadrant one, okay, my rotation will go to quad quadrant two, quadrant three, or quadrant four in this direction. And again, that is considered the positive. If you go clockwise, that's considered the negative rotation. So anytime I give you um, a rotation with a positive number, you are going to go in the counterclockwise direction. Now, rotations are not as easy as translations and reflections on the coordinate plane. So the easiest way to do this is to stick to this general rule of thumb. And the rotations that we're going to do in eighth grade are going to stick to 90, 180, and 270 degrees. Um, so basically 90 degrees is one 90 degree movement, 180 is two 90 degree movements, and 270 degrees would be three 90 degree movements, again, in the counterclockwise direction. If I want to rotate a coordinate point 90 degrees, the easiest way to do it is to remember this rule. I take the coordinate point that I have and I get my new coordinate point, which if I want to rotate it 90 degrees, I switch the x and y, and I do the opposite of the y value. So for example, if I have the coordinate point 2, 3, rotating that 90 degrees, I would switch the x and y and do the opposite of the y value. So this coordinate point rotated 90 degrees would become negative 3, 2. If I had the coordinate point negative 4, negative 5. If I wanted to rotate that 90 degrees, again, I would switch the coordinate points, and I would do the opposite of y, which means I would actually take this negative and make it positive. And that would be the rotation of this point. Again, this would be the a, this would be the a prime. It is easier for rotations to actually figure out what your coordinate point is going to be and then go through and plot them. If you want to rotate a point 180 degrees, you take the coordinate point that you have. We are actually going to keep x and y in the same order. We're not going to switch them. We're just going to do the opposite of x and the opposite of y. So if I have the coordinate point negative 3, 4, the opposite of x would become a positive 3, and the opposite of y would become a negative 4. So this is my pre-image and this is my image, and that is how you rotate a single point 180 degrees. All right, 270 degrees. If I want to rotate a point 270 degrees, now if you remember, 270 is three 90s. So it is going to be similar to the rotation of a 90 degree. Again, we are going to switch the x and y, just like we did with the rotation of the 90 degrees. But instead of the opposite of x, we're going to, or the opposite of y, we're then going to take the opposite of that x. So again, if I have a coordinate point 5, 9, I will switch those coordinate points and then do the opposite of that value, which makes that negative, opposite of the original x. If I have the coordinate point negative 2, negative 3. I want to rotate that 270 degrees. I flip the points and then do the opposite of my original x, so that becomes a positive 2. And that's how you rotate a point 270 degrees. Now, if you have to rotate an entire figure, like a triangle or quadrilateral, 90, 180, or 270, you simply perform this rule for every single point. So you, you take it point by point. So you take your first point, figure out what the prime will be, what the image will be. Take the second point of your pre-image, figure out what the image will be. Do the same with your third, and then go plot the points, and you, the figure should be rotated accordingly to however many degrees that you wanted to rotate it. Now, just like when we learned about reflections, we learned about rotations, our reflection symmetry. With rotations is also something called rotation symmetry. 
Now, rotation symmetry is the idea of being able to turn something 180 degrees or less, and it will still appear the same. It will appear as if a turn or a rotation has not taken place, even though it has. So again, I have a rectangle, okay? If I rotate a rectangle 90 degrees, you can tell that I have rotated it. So rotating at 90 degrees is not going to give us the rotation symmetry. However, if I rotate it 180 degrees, it doesn't even appear as if a rotation has happened. It looks the same. It looks congruent. Well, it would be congruent this way, but it looks the same as it did before. So a rectangle has what we call a rotation symmetry, and its angle of rotation is 180 degrees because I have to turn it 180 degrees for it to look the same. 90 won't work. 270 won't work. 45 won't work. It has to be that 180 degrees. Humans don't have rotation symmetry at all. So if a human was to turn 180, 90, you would not see any rotation symmetry from them. Um, you have to figure out an angle of rotation. And the best way to do that is to say how much of a turn took place. Now, a full rotation, we all know, is 360 degrees. So if I look at something like a square, this is more rectangle, but we're going to pretend that it's a square. A square, you turn a fourth of a turn to have its rotation symmetry for it to look the same. And so if I wanted to know what the angle of rotation is, how many degrees I turn then, because I know that it is one-fourth of a turn, I would take one-fourth times 360, and that would give me 90 degrees. If I did something like an equilateral triangle. Now, an equilateral triangle is one-third. If I turn this one-third of a full turn, or the other thing to think about is I'd have to turn it three times to get it back to the original, one-third of a full turn is what I need for an equilateral triangle. So if I want to know what the angle of rotation is, I would take one-third of 360, which is one-third times 360, which is 120 degrees. So the angle of rotation of an equilateral triangle is 120 degrees.